Good morning from the Police Superintendents Association's conference uh, 2024, where I'm delighted to be joined by Andy Cook, who is the Chief Inspector of Le Constabulary for His Majesty's uh, Inspectorate of uh, Constabulary and the Fire and Rescue Service. I hope I've got that right there, Andy. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, today, HMIC FRS has published a report uh, on activism. Uh, tell us, can you, something about that, the key findings, conclusions, recommendations? Sure. In what is a very long report, uh, we've made 22 recommendations in relation to impartiality, operational independence, and also looking at hate crime and the recording of hate crime, how um, police staff networks operate, and looking for the consistency around that, and also external advisory groups. Um, the key issues around it are obviously the systemic issues, and those systemic issues are uh, operational independence, there's no legislation that actually sets out exactly what it is, and as a result of that, what we have seen is misunderstanding or willful ignorance of how the whole policing system should operate between PCCs, the Home Secretary and Chief Constables. Some highly publicised issues. I mean, last year we had, obviously, the issues around the protests at the Palestinian and Israeli protests in London, which obviously put uh, the Commissioner under significant pressure due to some political pronouncements at that time. So in my view, operational independence needs to be properly legislated for so everyone knows exactly what their role is in that approach to policing. Secondly, impartiality of the police officers. In such a complex situation where we've got changing environments, changing society, the Equality Act hasn't kept up with some of the issues that are facing officers on the ground. And every respect for those officers. They're doing a great job dealing with these issues in very complex situations. But the law, legislation and guidance is a bit of a mess. So that needs to be addressed. Um, the Equality Act itself came in in 2010 and once again, in my view, it's become outdated. It doesn't deal with some of the issues that you need to deal with. Belief is a great example. Belief as a protected characteristic can mean an awful lot of different things. And we've seen an awful lot of case law recently that actually identifies um, some of the changes that police has to deal with. So veganism is a protected belief, um, opposition to critical race theory is a protected belief, um, gender criticality is a protected belief, and there's many more. Um, so for police to deal with that, it needs some really concrete solutions to that. It needs to be able to actually point and say, this is what we must do in this situation. At the moment, the whole situation is very fluid and police officers are struggling to keep up with it. So this sounds like the recommendations are uh, targeted uh, at government. Th if they're legislative matters, it's these are matters yet. for the new uh, Labour government that we now have here, here in the UK. There are a, no a number of the recommendations of the government, um, but a number also for Chief Constables, College of Policing, MPCC, uh, because everyone's got a role in this. Officers want clarity. They don't want to feel like they're being left to hang out to dry, whether that's by their own chiefs, whether that's by the government or whoever. So they need greater clarity in relation to it. Because as I say, it's a complex world, society's complex, and policing is getting increasingly complex. So they need all the assistance they can get. And UK policing is particularly complex, it seems, because of the, uh, the, the, the almost spaghetti junction uh, approach of governance that there is. There are many, many parties uh, that need to be involved in some way to make positive change. Perhaps not less so on on legislative matters. The government, of course, could steamroll through a bill, but so much better if they do so uh, in, uh, with the support of, of others. And so hopefully you've set out, the HMIC FRS has set out that, that approach. Hopefully so. And a lot of these issues can be dealt with with better guidance. So it doesn't all need to be legislative. That's why there's an equal responsibility on MPCC, college chiefs and others to play their part in giving that greater clarity to officers. Let's step back from the detail of that specific mm. report and look more widely at the role and focus of HMIC FRS on policing. So put to one side the fire mm. uh, responsibilities. Where do you see your and your colleagues, your team's key focus as being over the coming small number of years? I think policing is heading for significant reform. 
Uh, I think the inspectors have a role to play in that. Uh, as you'll probably be aware, we requested more powers in my last state of policing reports, and this government have agreed to that. It was in the King's speech and in the Labour Party manifesto. Uh, and those powers aren't to be punitive to policing. Those powers are to protect communities. So the powers to direct police forces when they have significant uh, public safety issues, the power to inspect PCCs for the services they provide to policing, uh, and also the power for the inspector to be involved in chief constable um, appointments. Because as we've seen, there's been real problems about recruiting the right people into role or getting enough people to so go Recruiting for anybody into recruiting that role. Recruiting anyone for some jobs, yeah, absolutely. Which is a terrible situation to be in because these are roles with significant powers and significant responsibilities. So we all need to make sure the right people are in those roles. So I don't want to choose chief constables, but there needs to be some oversight in relation to those appointments. The um, HMIC FRS, uh, the previous incumbent was not a former police officer. Uh, you uh, have, um, uh, with your appointment, HMIC FRS has reverted to the previous long-standing approach of uh, former officers. Uh, is there any significant difference, do you think, in your mind between uh, whether a former officer or somebody else of high regard uh, leads HMRC FRS. I think it's easier for a former chief to do it because obviously you've got that, your colleagues, ex-colleagues have that knowledge of you. Hopefully you've got some respect from the time that you spent there. So in order to push change through, they're probably more likely to listen. That's not decrying Tom's time as, as, as chief HMI. Uh, Tom was the first ever non police chief to do it uh, and I think Tom did a good job and I think Tom's approach to it changed over the years as well I mean Tom was a massive supporter of policing not a lot of police officers know that but he actually is a massive supporter of policing and he's done an awful lot of good things during his tenure. Well I, I hope that your tenure continues uh, as uh, Chief Inspector of Constabulary for uh, as many years uh, as you uh, wish it to so very best wishes for that continued time. I do hope that Policing TV and Policing Insight can uh, continue to cover the work that you and HMIC uh, FRS uh, continue to do. But for the time being, very much appreciated. Andy, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Bernard.